Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we looked at how we make electricity, and we said that there were three main ways that we do that. And those three main ways also happen to be the same as the three effects of electricity. In that video, we explored the chemical method of making electricity and the thermal method of making electricity. However, in this video, we're going to look at the third and probably the most important method of making electricity, and that is the magnetic method. So we're going to bring the camera into the workbench. We're going to have a look at how we use the magnetic method to make electricity using some Lego, some magnets and a conductor. So let's find out why that magnetic method is the most important way that we make electricity. So the third and final way that we generate electricity is the magnetic effect of electricity. We take that magnetic effect and we use that to make electricity. And the reason that we've done this one last is it's actually probably the most important way that we produce electricity currently. The vast amount of electricity that we produce for everyday use around the house, at our places of work and other places is produced by the magnetic effect. What we've actually got on the screen here now you can see is what is effectively uh, a motor. And there is another video on Joe Robinson training here that features this motor that I've constructed mainly out of bits of Lego. But what we're gonna do in this part of the presentation is we're gonna turn this Lego motor into a Lego generator. So we're gonna use this to generate electricity. Now, the critical part of this is really these two bits here. So these are the magnets that create the magnetic field that we're going to generate electricity by. So the principle that I'm about to explain to you is one of the most important in electrical science. If we pass a conductor through a magnetic field, we generate electricity inside the conductor. So that's a really important point. If we just pass a conductor through this magnetic field here, we will generate electricity. In fact, I could take this conductor and pass it through the magnetic field there, and it will make electricity inside this conductor. However, uh, this is happening on a very, very small scale because we've just got one conductor passing through the magnetic field. What we've got here is a conductor that's been wrapped into a loop. It's been wrapped around many, many times. And that means that more conductor is interacting with the magnetic field, which means we generate more electricity. Now for an explanation and a demonstration of this basic principle, please watch another video on Joe Robinson training that helps to uh, visualize the conductor passing through the magnetic field. We do an experiment where we can actually see electricity being generated, but hopefully we can do similar on a larger scale here. So the challenging part we need to get over now is that we're actually going to generate electricity inside this conductor, but this part of the generator is going to be spinning round and round and round inside the magnetic field, and we need to extract the electricity from this moving part. So at the end here, you can see there's a couple of little exposed conductors there, and that's where we're gonna get the electricity out. But how do we get electricity from this moving part onto the static part of the outside world? Well, normally we would use a device made out of carbon called a brush, which basically just sits against this piece of copper and would uh, make contact with that copper as it rotates around, and that would then give us the electrical connection onto the rotating part of the motor. Uh, I tried doing this using a little bit of pencil lead, uh, but I think the uh, carbon content, the graphite content of uh, pencil leads these days is pretty microscopic. I think it's mostly uh, wax these days, so uh, that didn't work too well. So we're not going to use a carbon brush in this case, we're just going to use uh, a piece of copper. Now that would not normally work very well in a real life generator, because uh, you get some issues and problems with that. But in this case, it's gonna work just fine for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these little pieces of copper into these little holders that I've built here. So I've taken my Lego motor and made it a little bit more complicated in order to become the generator so that we can get the uh, electricity out of it. And now hopefully that will spin around inside there and make contact with those pieces of copper. Okay, so that's going around not too badly. So what we now need to do is to hook this up to the outside world. So again, these two pieces of copper here are gonna make intermittent connection with the rotating part of the machinery here. So what we'll do is we'll connect these up to our multimeter. So we'll connect that there and we'll connect that there. 
So these are making intermittent contact with the rotating part of the generator now. And just to stop those kind of being sprung out and flung all over the place, I'll just put a little securing piece of Lego on there like that. So hopefully what we should now find is if I hook up the driving mechanism, uh, so I just need to put a gear on the end of that and push that on there and then connect that up. What we should now find, if those teeth mesh like that, what we should find now is that when we rotate uh, this part of the device, it should rotate this round on the inside and we should see a voltage being produced there. So we've got this set to measure DC. Let's give this a spin and see if we get some electricity generated. There we go, do you see that? So it shot up a little bit. It went up to about 0.013. So that was uh, 13 millivolts there. Let's just set this so that it measures the maximum value produced. So we'll set that. So now it will record up here the maximum value that we produce uh, in any given time period. So we'll give this a quick rotation, see what happens. There we go, 35 volts that got up to. Oh, not 35 volts. There we go, so that's now up to 0.0157, so almost 16 millivolts. And again, struggling to, there we go, look at that, up to 22 millivolts nearly. And I think that's probably the best we're going to get out of it today. We, oh, look at that, there we go, very good. So we got that up to nearly 38 millivolts using our conductor passing through a magnetic field and then extracting the electricity out of here. Now this is obviously a tiny, tiny generator. Uh, the industrial generators that we use to make lots of electricity that we use in the workplace and other places like that are obviously much, much bigger. And the electricity that is generated to be delivered to our homes is made by generators that are absolutely enormous and will produce much higher voltages and produce more power for us to use as well. But the principle is almost exactly the same as this. There's a little bit more complexity goes into it and for a bit more detail on that please watch another video on Joe Robinson training. However, we see the basic principle here that when we pass a conductor through a magnetic field it will generate electricity. So in this video we've seen how you can generate electricity by passing a conductor through a magnetic field. Now an interesting point to bear in mind here is that actually you can hold the conductor still and move the magnetic field past the conductor and it will have very much the same effect. You will still generate electricity inside that conductor and that's a very important principle to help us understand how things like transformers work but more on that in a future video. So just to summarise the two videos that we've looked at in this series, we've seen how there are the three effects of electricity and how those three effects can also be considered to be the three methods that we use to generate electricity. So we looked first of all at the chemical effect and we saw that that's used in cells and batteries in order to generate electricity or sometimes, this may be written this way in your exam, it may say uh, how does a battery produce an EMF? And the correct answer to that, if you've got a multiple choice list of options, will be something along the lines of using the chemical effect of electricity. We then looked at the thermal effect of electricity and we saw that by connecting those two pieces of wire together, those different pieces of metal together and heating it up at the end, we produced a device called a thermocouple, which will also generate electricity. It will generate an EMF when heat was applied to it. That's something else just to watch out for in your exams. You may be given the question along the lines of what principle of electricity or what effect of electricity is utilized in a thermocouple. And of course the correct answer is the thermal effect, but it may also be written as the heating effect. So just watch out for that. Of course, thermal and heating both have the similar connotation, so that's not too much of a problem. And then we've got that most important way that we produce electricity in at the moment, the magnetic effect. And that is the way that we produce the vast amount of electricity that we use to power our homes, our places of work, our businesses, our places of recreation as well. We use the magnetic effect in big power stations. Generators are spun round, which is very similar to the effect that we were seeing in a small scale on our Lego motor on the table in this video. So it's very, very important to remember those three effects, the 
chemical effect as used in cells and batteries, the thermal effect as used in thermocouples, and the magnetic effect as used in generators and alternators. Now that uh, word alternator may be something that you've heard before. An alternator is just another thing that generates electricity by passing a conductor through a magnetic field. However, an alternator will produce an AC electrical supply rather than the DC electrical supply that we looked at in this video. And we'll have a look at that in a future video, uh, how we generate AC using an alternator instead of DC using a generator similar to what we looked at today. We'll also go into more depth on the actual physical construction of generators and alternators and see uh, how they uh, look like in the real world rather than the model that we produced here. And hopefully that'll help us out with our understanding of how electricity is produced and then sent over long distances all over the country. So we've seen those three important effects, the three methods that we use to generate electricity. We've looked at some typical exam questions that you may get asked, and we've learned a lot in the course of this video, hopefully. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>